Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Tomorrow. This time I wanted to talk about how Boeing has officially changed the name of their CST-100 capsule to the Starliner, and a Soyuz capsule has docked with the International Space Station for a crew replacement. And that's what we're going to be talking about for this, your space pod, for September 9th, 2015. So Boeing has finally come up with a cool name for their CST-100 capsule, and they made this announcement at an event where they opened up the old Orbiter Processing Facility number 3 at Kennedy Space Center for operations. And with this, they're going to be doing a lot of the processing and manufacturing there for the CST-100 Dreamliners. And they're already building a structural test article right now. They've built several test articles before in the past, but this one is going to be going through most of the high-performance tests and will be culminating in a 2017 pad abort test. So for that particular one, it's not going to be going into space, but it is going to be doing a lot of the final qualification testing to certify them to be able to fly into space. And later on this year in December, they're going to complete construction of some remodeling and bringing a lot of hardware they need to start actually manufacturing the Starliners that will go to space. Also, nearby at Launch Complex 41, Boeing is making a lot of progress on constructing a crew access tower for the Dreamliner when it launches on Atlas V rockets in the future. And with this tower, it is umbilical, which means that it will be able to swing out of the way and won't interfere with any future United Launch Alliance flights. Something else that's interesting is that since the Starliner is capable of sending up four astronauts at a time to the space station, space station mission planners are already making plans for how to increase the expedition crew sizes to seven crew members. And with that, they'll actually be able to double their research time because of the, all the daily tasks, just having one more person there to help out with that, they'll be able to do a lot more research, which is what the station is for, right? So that's pretty cool, and the same thing can be said for Dragon, too. Speaking of the International Space Station, a new Soyuz capsule docked to the space station on Friday. Specifically, this is Soyuz TMA-18M, and with it it had three new crew members, although two of them will not be staying for a full six-month expedition and will be returning home on September 11th. The reason that two crew members are only staying for a week is because of the year-long mission study which is currently in progress. Scott Kelly and Mikhail Korninenko are currently part of that mission, and it got started when they launched on Soyuz TMA-16M, which launched in March of 2015. And on that mission, they also had Gennady Padalka, which launched with them and was the commander of the International Space Station until recently, when it was handed over to Scott Kelly. Now, Oleg Konenyenko, Kamiya Yui, and Chell Lindgren also launched on Soyuz TMA-17M on July 22nd of 2015, and they will return on that same Soyuz. It's currently scheduled for December 22nd of this year, 2015. The new Soyuz TMA-18M brings Sergei Volkov and first-timers Andreas Mogensen, who just so happens to be the first Danish person in space, and also Aiden Ambatov, who is a cosmonaut from Kazakhstan, and those two will return to Earth on Friday with Gennady Padalka on Soyuz TMA-16M. All of these crew changes account for and make up for the whole year-long mission and how that kind of throws things off with the only three crew member Soyuz capsule. And so this explains how everyone's going to be able to make it back home and after this year-long mission is over, how things will continue with the old six-month types of missions. So it's very interesting. It was all sorted out before with the whole tourist trip of Sarah Brightman who was going to visit the space station. But since that got canceled, I'm glad that this whole thing came about where these two crew members are only staying for a week and then coming home with the person who launched with Scott Kelly and Mikhail Korninenko. So this is all very well and good and just another case that ISS mission planners definitely know what they're doing. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and let me know what you think about all of this progress with the Starliner and the International Space Station. And also recently I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys about different topics to discuss, specifically the Skylon space plane, which I can definitely do. But something I'm a little bit more excited about talking about really soon is a lot of these really cool payload ideas that are floating around for the space launch system. I, I have a lot of really good PDFs and information about what those ideas are and all this information 
information is publicly available, but you do have to do some digging for it. So I'm more than happy to do a rundown of a lot of these different ideas so far. But also, since last week I did a rundown of a lot of the larger class next generation rockets, some of you have asked for me to cover the smaller class next generation rockets. And there are quite a few of them that I am very excited about. Probably one of the ones that I'm really excited about is not just their small class rockets, but their whole company and all the different cool things they're doing. And that's Arca Space. They have a lot of really cool stuff going on and I could devote a whole video to that. So I guess what I'm asking of you guys is what would you, what should I take priority with and what do you really want me to talk about next? That's what I'm asking about for you guys. So please let me know. And also, if you are willing and able, please consider contributing to our Patreon campaign so that we can continue to make Space News videos like this. Again, thank you very much for watching. My name is Space Mike, and hopefully you know a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.